Okay, so to stabilize video in Shotcut, I'm going to start off with the short answer, showing you how to do it, and then I'm going to move to the long answer, explaining why I chose the values that I did. So the first thing you're going to do is choose Filters in the toolbar at the top here. Click Plus or Add. You can see at the bottom here, you have three options. So you have Favorite Filters, Video Filters, and Audio Filters. You're going to choose Video Filters. Scroll down to the bottom because it's alphabetized. Now you can see Stabilize is not an option, and that's because I have my video track V1 selected. Now for the Stabilize filter to show up in the list, you have to select a clip in your actual timeline, like this. It can be big or small, doesn't matter. So click plus, video, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see Stabilize. Now the short answer for this is I put shakiness at the max, accuracy at the max value. Filter options, I keep zoom at around zero. You might have to add 2 or 3% if the edges get a little shaky. And smoothing, I try to keep it between 5 and 40 or 10 and 40. Somewhere around 20 to 30 is usually the sweet spot. So you're going to click Analyze. Save it as whatever. doesn't really matter. And you can see at the top right it says Jobs, Analyze, 3%, 4%. So we're going to let that finish. Okay, now that our analysis is complete, we're ready to export. Now, one thing to note is when you apply this filter, you are going to lose quality. So you want to definitely make sure that you choose dual pass if you select constant bitrate, because that's going to go over your video twice and try to pick up any extra detail that was missed in the first pass as it's exporting. So what this did is if you play your clip back, it's supposed to delete any shakiness now, it's important to note that this filter is not meant for extremely shaky video. It's only meant to smooth out small judders from if you're holding a handheld camera. So keep that in mind when you're filming. Alright, so now for the long answer. Now, if we go back to our filter options, you can see that I did quite a few different tests. And what I found is that maxing shakiness and accuracy, the only downside to that is it takes a little bit longer to analyze. Now, if you don't have a great computer or you just don't have the time to do it all in one shot for whatever reason, you can click this button here to cut your timeline into small individual pieces. So that way you can click little pieces and analyze a little bit at a time, save it, and perform the operation throughout different days. But I definitely recommend maxing these because I tried it halfway, a little bit below, close to the max, and this filter really does take away quality from your video. So allowing the filter to really analyze your video to its fullest potential is a good idea. Now as far as filter options, I leave zoom at zero because I've never had a need to use it. When you apply smoothing, it automatically zooms in your video as it applies the smoothing so that you don't get a crazy border. The only reason I can see zoom coming in handy is if smoothing zooms your video to a very awkward position. For example, if this bunny looks good at 25% or 50% of the screen being taken up, but after applying smoothing it only takes up 30-40% to 40 of the screen and it just looks awkward, you can use zoom to fix that sort of awkward perception that's been made by smoothing. Now I think what's happening with the shakiness option is it's treating your video as if it's extremely juddery and there's wide variations. And even for small variations, maxing that is going to do a really good job at analyzing the video better than if you have it set to a lower value. Now accuracy on the other hand, what I think that's doing is it's chopping your video up into smaller blocks of pixels. So what that does is as the filter is trying to smooth your video, it has smaller chunks to work with and it can give you a nicer picture. So it's important to note that the more you smooth your video, the more it's going to have to zoom in to compensate for judder around the border. And the more that it zooms your video in, the more quality you're going to lose because it has less pixels filling out that overall image. So you do want to minimize smoothing as much as you can, but you also want to make sure you get enough of a smoothing effect that you don't have judder and there was a point to the filter. Now because this filter can make your video a little bit blurry, one recommendation I have is to go to your video filters and add sharpen. And if you apply sharpening, you can try to reduce a bit of that blurriness. I haven't had much luck with that, to be honest. I find Virtual WD Shaker does a better job. But the pros that I found using Shotcut instead of Virtual Dub is it's just easier for my workflow because I use Shotcut for a lot of various different things, such as splicing clips together. So if I can get away with it, I'd rather use Shotcut because it just takes less time and effort, less programs to open. Another thing I prefer about Shotcut is it seems to take less time overall between analyzing and applying the filter versus Virtual Dub. Now Virtual Dub does take a long time, but I find it overall gives a better result. 
Higher quality, but more time, more hassle, and more computing power. Now this is the original footage. You can see it's pretty shaky. Some extreme moments that the filter just isn't going to be able to fix. But if you look at the bushes, the grass, the bunny, you can get an overall idea of what the quality looks like right now. Now this is applied with maximized shakiness and accuracy. Zoom at zero and smoothing at 30. So you can see there is some blurriness to the bunny, the grass, the bushes over here, but the video is overall a lot smoother. And this final video is with tons of smoothing. So you can see it's, it's become extremely blurry. There's almost new artifacts being introduced, but the video is playing smooth as butter. I mean, at least compared to the original. So it is a bit of a balancing effect between the quality of your image and the level of shakiness you can live with. Alright, hope that helps someone. Thanks for watching.